five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, how are ya? It's the ramble, and it goes from now until midnight, maybe, maybe. Let me let me explain to you. I've been having trouble with my computer that got fixed. Um, it tends to all of a sudden decide to reboot my machine. Now, I don't know if it's a software I'm using or something, uh, but I can't figure out what it is. And when I thought I had it all fixed uh, about an hour ago, a half hour ago, it just, you know, cut out. So if at some point during this show, all of a sudden we go off, uh, that's what happened. The machine shut down and then rebooted up. And in which case, I'm probably just not going to come back, all right, until I get this thing fixed. I'll go back to my old machine. Well, we'll explain that later. Let's hope we make it uh, through what we're about to do, which is uh, later. We, we go to, uh, oh, wait a minute, i got to do something here. Hold on a second. I've got to uh, t- turn off some uh, audio that's going on in the background here. Okay, there we go. I think we're all right oh, now. Audio. No, we're not. Oh, where are we? Oh boy, this is this is this is such a cluster fuck. I just you know I hate it. I just hate it. Uh, well, somewhere along the line there's a uh, there's some audio coming out, and I don't know well, where it's along coming the out. Line, there's a see see. I, I have no idea where that's coming from. Oh boy, this is just this is just annoying as all get out. Oh, let me see here. Could it be there that it's that I'm not getting uh, getting audio, or is it there? No, that's blanked out. Is it there? Um, come on, come on. Is it there? No, it's not there, and it's not there. Where the hell is the sound coming from? I have no idea. Uh, this is weird. See, listen. Is that, the sound coming from? See, it's not supposed to do that, and if I can't get that to stop. Uh, well, I know I can get it to stop. I'll just kill my, uh, I'll kill my, let's see. Did that do it? Yeah, I killed it. All right. Well, anyway, uh, be that as it may, <laughs> I don't even have any, <laughs> any, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, oh, fuck it. Uh, th- this is, this is getting to be too much for me. Anyway, uh, we have uh, we have an interview tonight, and I uh, I thought we should uh, go to it. Uh, um, but let's see, I have to do this. Oh boy, how am I going to get the sound out tonight? Uh, this is ridiculous. Hold on a second, folks. I'm going to do something that I don't want to do. I thought it was uh, Google Chrome that was causing my problem, but apparently it's not. Uh, and, uh, so, um, let me just, um, let me just bring it up here for a second. These are a few things I got to do before we go on with the show. You know, this is so stupid and unprofessional and, uh, just not the way I like to see this Uh, show go. Okay. We know that that's there. Okay. Are we anywhere else? All right, we're okay. I'm using Google Chrome right now, and uh, hopefully it will not crash the show uh, because I don't think that's the problem. We thought it was. We thought it was Google Chrome, Uh, but it's not. So anyway, look, uh, I got an interview here with somebody, and I think uh, we should just go to it and just hope for the best, and if you suddenly hear the show go off, I'm not coming back tonight, okay? But if it keeps going, keep your fingers crossed. Everything will be just fine. Let's check in with an old friend, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, that is the wizened face of our once-every-three-week guest, Will Durst. Hi, Will. Good morning, Alex Bennett. How are you doing? Yeah, well, the fact is you're a political comedian. I am? Yeah, and uh, every three weeks, things change enough that we have stuff we can talk about, (laughs) you know? 
Uh, I love uh, something like MSNBC who day by day uh, tries to find something to gin up. You know, it's always breaking news. It's always they always have that sign breaking news breaking up there. News. The graphic breaking news. Yeah. It broke. Can't they come up with another saying? One of those networks should say like news that just happened or something. I don't know. You know. <laughs> But it, it, you, they need a new phrase. You're right. You know, it, it's it's endemic of our society where we take terms and cheapen them, uh, like star, star. We cheapen star. You know. I wonder where the first uh, example of using star to call someone of fame. You know, it probably happened on stage. In, no, well, in my memory, uh, the the one that comes out to me was MGM, who used to have as their motto, more stars than there are in heaven. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, but, uh, but it, it doesn't that, don't we have a tendency to cheapen things by doing that? You know, over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or the one I love, uh, I just, I think is just terrific. Is genius. You know, uh, oh, he's such a genius. Well, uh, it, it, you know, I think, how, what would Einstein think about that? You know, um, oh, I understood uh, what what rose to the level. You know, I mean, everybody has a. I'm sure the architectural. Uh, trade magazines have their own standard for genius, you know, and uh, you don't really have to be uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, you know. I uh, imagine other people, oh, you, you know, know uh, art world. I don't, has anybody ever referred to me as a genius? I don't think so. No. No, I don't think I ever got that appellation either. Yeah, but you will probably if you get old enough or dead. Or dead. Uh, or dead. Oh, a genius comic, Will Durst. Yeah, who was it that said uh, the two things that always accrue in stature are politicians, hookers, and bad architecture? That they always <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, that's kind of an offshoot of that old saying that uh, um, the only things that get good reputations with age are politicians and hookers. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh. So anyway, so so uh, 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 this is the genius Will Durst, I uh, and this is the genius Alex Bennett, yeah. the genius of, of uh, media, yeah, the media genius. The, can you imagine, folks, just the um, uh, amazingness of the of the of the geniuses that are on your screen right now? Yes, the yeah. intellect here is overwhelming. But anyway, we we tend to cheapen terms, we tend to not give them the true respect they should have. Well, one is imitation. People hear something someone described as a genius, and they want to jump on the bandwagon. They want their own genius, or they want to jump on the genius. And two, it's a lack of imagination. And three, it's expedient, because people need to uh, denote something really big, really fast, you know, make sure that they got all their... And the responsibility is on them a lot of times, you know, forgetting this guy. Oh, he's a genius. You're going to love him. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, we, we cheapen terms in our society, and now we've cheapened the term president, so I, I don't see any reason why. <laughs> yeah, I know. keep looking for that joke uh, that in America any anybody can become president, and now we saw how that worked out, or, <laughs> yeah. or, or Donald Trump proves it, or, you know, there's got to be, I know there's a joke there. There is a joke there. But you know why there isn't a joke there? This is really getting tiresome. Yeah. Scary, uh, off the wall. I mean, I just, you know, it, it's, I don't, you know, I've lived a long time, uh, uh, fortunately, knock on wood. I'm just sitting around here every day wondering what's going to get me. Anyway, uh, and in all those years, I can only say there maybe was one other time that was as bad as this, and that was the McCarthy era. Uh, yeah, when we had all those witch hunts going on and people being held, you know, brought before congressional committees, they'd be asked if they were communists or not, and if they refused to testify, they didn't have a job the next day. 
You know, that was a pretty terrible time, and that was right after the war when we had that whole Red Scare and all of that. You know, obviously right. we don't have a Red Scare anymore. Our president calls one. You know, so uh, uh, it, 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 it that was maybe as bad a time that I can remember. But then hop to now, and hell, you know, I wish we had Nixon back. Uh, or a Carter. <laughs> or Carter. You know, Carter wasn't a great president. He was a great human being. Great what? human being. Lousy president. I think uh, I think James Comey said it best uh, that Donald Donald Trump eats your soul a bit at a time. That's good. That's yeah. very good. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is amazing. It is just amazing. And it is amazing how... He has so dominated the dialogue, you know. It's 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 not like the dialogue is oh uh, 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 what you know with Obama. Maybe you heard about Obama every couple of days. Maybe you know he just went and he did his work, you know. And if the work was good, somebody reported and the president today, blah blah blah. But the, Trump dominates it every single day. And these people over at MSNBC, at CNN, uh, and uh, to a lesser extent Fox, because they're sucking his dick, are just eating it, all, eating it up. They, be, they become the all Trump all the time networks. Yeah, they, they have become state-sponsored television, Fox News. Yeah. And uh, slowly... You know, but uh, the the pace has accelerated in the last two and a half years. I wonder if he, <clears throat> I wonder if he can keep this up. I wonder if there's a saturation point. I'm 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 exhausted. Yeah, fatigue. Yeah, I'm exhausted. Uh, you know, so so now uh, here's here's the question I have for for the comic. Okay, first of all, I want to ask you, who you think so far of all the Democratic candidates is would be your choice for somebody, A, who could beat Trump, but that's maybe a different question than, B, who could uh, 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 be the best nominee as just a nominee? Yeah. yeah, those are two different people. Yeah. I think Biden can beat Trump, and I think, uh, as she demonstrated when she uh, interviewed... Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, the little lapdog, uh, the 194th breed of the American Kennel Club, William Barr, the other day. I thought yeah. Kamala <laughs> Harris. Great job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who, Klobuchar? Are you saying? Yeah. Kamala Harris. Oh, Kamala Harris, yeah. I, I, get I, a, I get a problem with Klobuchar's voice. It's always as if she's on the edge of not being sure of what she's saying in advance. And I got a problem with Klobuchar. I could not, her voice could grate carrots. Yeah. So I, I, I cannot well, go, first, unless first, she's smart and mean. Let me go back to another, make, make another first question instead of the one that I did, and then we'll get to the others. But of all the ones that are running, who are the ones that should just get out right now because they haven't got a fucking chance? Andrew Yang. <laughs> <laughs> if only because I remember his name. Yeah, who, uh, uh, yeah. I don't think Hickenlooper has a chance. I don't think Michael Bennett has a chance. Um, two guys running from Colorado. Maybe we should put them in a Thunderdome and say, you only get one guy from Colorado. Um uh, I don't think uh, Eric Swalwell has a chance. Uh, These are names I haven't even heard. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, why... Uh, why? Mary Ann Williamson, I don't think she has a chance. Why are they in it, then, is I the question. I don't know. I don't know. I was thinking that earlier. I mean, I may, as well, I may as well put my hat in the ring. I mean, you know, it... it, 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 it in fact, if you invited over all the candidates to my apartment... We it would fill it up for a party, you know. I, w that, I wouldn't invite that many people for a party. Okay, I think it's twenty one right now. I think it, it, is it up to twenty one? Yeah. But I mean, I keep thinking, Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. Get out. Oh really? Yeah. I mean, I I think I don't think she's going to get the nomination. I don't think there's a chance in hell she's hey, going to get the nomination. Twenty out of twenty one of those are not going to get the nomination. Yeah. 
yeah. yeah. But I, I don't think she, I think she's wasting her time, her money. She could be better serving her constituency in Congress. Uh, oh. uh, Kamala Harris has a certain charisma that I would say she should keep going. Okay. Uh, Klobuchar, I, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm on the edge as to whether she should get out. Um, quite frankly, I think Beto O'Rourke should give up. I, 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 I'd be I, better served uh, to run for Senate in Texas again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, yep. and how many, my question is, how many of these people are doing what they're doing as kind of an audition? You know, well, that always happens. For something happened, else. It, uh, you know. That happened in the Republican nomina uh, uh, nomination process four years ago when when Scott Walker was, at this time, before the 20. Before the 2016, Scott Walker was leading all the polls. So yeah, I mean, you never know what's what's going on. It's it's uh, a lot of people are running, as you say, auditioning for vice president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I let me also add that uh, I think that the guy who surprises me, and he, you know, he was the flavor of the month for a couple of weeks. Booty gig. Booty gig. Yeah. yeah, booty call, whatever his name is. Booty gig. Yeah, booty gig. Uh, booty gig. Booty gig. I don't think I got that. He uh, has managed to not continue to be flavor of the month. He's continued to be a good flavor. You know, he seems to be. Yeah, a, he seems to be becoming chocolate members. or vanilla. What? <laughs> He's actually jumped into the the top row, Baskin Robbins. Yeah. Uh, he uh, Willie Brown, the former mayor of San Francisco. You remember him? Yeah, I remember Willie, of course. He said uh, he was taken by uh, uh, Booty Gig, and then he saw him a second and third time, and uh, he said the exact same thing and told the same stories, and it the 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 petals kind of faded on the rose for him. Yeah, uh, but I think he's got, he is a stealth candidate in, a, in that he has, you tick off all the little things Fox, on, yeah. the, on the chart. and, and being unwed, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, no, but I mean, like, for instance, two terms in Afghanistan. Yeah. All right? Where is it, Harvard? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh Mayor, you know he's been he's been a mayor of a town, so at least he knows administration, which is something you know. Trump can't call him inexperienced because if you want to talk about inexperience, Trump is probably the most inexperienced president we've ever had. Um, I just think there's very little that Trump can throw on him. I mean, he can't use the gay card. He can't say, "Oh, you know." Hey, Ferry Budigig, give him some kind of name or something like that. You know, he can't do that with Budigig, and he can't uh, he he can't assail oh, him. Loafers, if you know what I mean. I mean, well, what can he assail him on? Uh, Budigig today uh, came out with a statement that uh, uh, America was never as great as advertised, which I kind of like, wow. you know, because I think it's true. I think we're very egotistical about America is great. Have you ever been anywhere else? I'll France is kind of nice, you know? Yeah. 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 Uh, England, uh, they have some good medical care there. The, uh, go up to uh, Norway and Sweden. Those are perfectly idyllic countries. So to say that we're the best, you know, uh, America's the best, is um, I think he's right. I think it's not as good as it was advertised. We had slavery, you know. We had the Red Scare. Uh, we could go through, a, a tick off a whole bunch of, of things that show that it wasn't as great as we advertised it. We had Nixon. Yeah. So that's the one thing I guess that Trump would go after. Yeah. But he couldn't go after his gayness. That wouldn't be unseemly. Well, we're talking about Trump. I th I think he'll do a, a dog whistle. Though there'll, there'll be some sort of you know offhand remark where he's you know nudge nudge wink wink to all of his uh, his base and cores. Yeah. Uh, I just don't know if he'll last well. You know, whereas Biden, you know, he's 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 uh, Biden. Long fight, and uh, the unions love him, 
and you know all the east coast and west coast people uh, all the elites they it's different that uh, cuz in in the republican revolution yeah. it was the base that that rebelled against uh, the business guys and the religious guys it was the base that said no we want change and and here it's the elites for the democrats it's the elites you know yeah. it's all the the blue the the heavy blues the new yorks and the californias and and they're the ones who want oh we don't want the status quo we want whereas the the midwestern uh, co core of democrats uh, the blue collar guys yeah. the democrats they want biden cuz they trust him and and they've seen that he's always worked with labor and that he, they think that maybe he can work with the other side they don't want the revolution it's the elites who yeah. want the revolution the aocs you know who, who demand change right now and and let's ban cars and and everybody gets a pony and you know it's it's the the, the middle class that kind of just tamp all that down yeah. Well, so I think I it's think it's gonna be an interesting fight. The exact opposite of the Republicans. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, but you know, I mean, I think in terms of, I mean, yes, I think he could give Trump a good fight. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Beto. Uh, huh? Beto. No. Or uh, Biden. 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 Beto. Or Buttigieg. 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 Biden, Beto, Buttigieg. <laughs> or Buttigieg. Yeah. <laughs> I think probably part of the problem, you see this perception here, and I argued this with my ex-wife, Ronnie, a couple of weeks ago, that I, 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 I don't think when we talk about electability, we have to talk about abil you know, ability, uh, history, whatever. Trump threw that out the window. There's a, a, an electability factor that has to do with charisma, okay, and that has to do with perception. Uh, the thing I like about Buttigieg, I think he looks young. He looks like he's ready to take on the day. You know, he looks like he could get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and work until 3 o'clock in the morning, you know. And, and Biden looks like he barely got out of bed. That's the problem with Biden. I think Biden looks tired. And do we need to, you know, and... This is ageist, but I'm 79. So going you on, get to be ageist. So I can be ageist. Yeah. He looks too old for the job. You know? Well, he's what, 74? No, he's, he, I think he's going to be, if he were elected president, he'll be something like, what, 78 maybe? I'm yeah, yeah. wrong. And Bernie is 77? I mean, Bernie is like, you know, he's in the dinosaur wing of the Natural Museum. You know, I mean, I yeah, mean, good news from his paleontologist, I mean, though. <laughs> what we we have all these people, and what we come down to are the two old farts. And haven't yeah. we had enough old farts in politics for years? I think the perfect nexus of age and whatever was Obama. He was at the right age. That's the right age. He had the energy. He could, you know, it's a rough, demanding job, and and I think he did pretty well. Uh, he was the second youngest president. Yeah, and and I think that was the for this century. Okay, that's the perfect age. Maybe in in centuries past, you could have a big fat president like Taft, or you know Coolidge, or whoever, you know, who looked like he was had one foot in the grave. But that was then, and this is now. Well, this is the day of television and social media and all those things. And what face do you want there? And I think. Young, any face other than Trump's. We, well, of I'll course. I'll tell you, but, any face other than I'll I'll vote for a child's beach pail full of sand if it's got a chance against Trump. Well, anything, uh, anything, anything, anything. But the the question is, uh, uh, are these people? I mean, like I, I like Bernie because he's a socialist, and so am I. Okay, uh, uh, I. Wish you were a Democrat. Uh, I, I, yeah, I like Biden because he's got a history, you know, of, of uh, you know, he's got a bad history, too. He's got that whole, uh, you know, what do you call it, hearings uh, for, yeah. 
Uh, he's got, but the reason he's got a lot of baggage is he's been around so long. He built up baggage, right? Whereas uh, Mayor Pete has no baggage because he hasn't had time to. You know, what's his baggage? He got a C in math in high school or something. I don't know. That would be his baggage. So a, as you get older, as presidents get older, um, uh. As candidates get older, as can, they, they can, get more baggage. Yeah, they yeah. get more baggage. Yeah, yeah um, Biden's got more baggage than the first United flight out of O'Hare after a freak spring blizzard. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. lot of baggage. Uh, uh, what's his name? Trump didn't have a lot of baggage because we didn't know a lot about him. His businesses dealings were secretive. You know, all of that. So it wasn't like he had a record of voting for this and then voting for that. You know. I think well, you know, he was for the war before he was against it. Yeah. yeah, and I think his bad time was taking out a full page ad against what the Central Park Seven or whatever that was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there were things there, but they, it, it, it's not like a politician who goes in every day and votes on stuff. Right. So you can nail him down on position. So he has, you know, a paper trail, as it were. Uh, now it comes the big question because you're the you know, this is your business. Which of all the Democratic candidates would be the best for comedy? Ah. Oh, Democrats are so boring for comedy because, you know, everything is, uh, is shaded and, you know, there's gradations. You know who, you know who said that before you? Mort Saul years ago. Oh, when, really? When Kennedy got elected, he said, my career is over. Uh. <laughs> You know, when he was making fun of the Republicans, they're easy to make fun of. Yeah. Democrats are a lot harder to make fun of. I had that problem with uh, during Obama. Really? It was hard to turn the Titanic, you know? Yeah. I had eight years of Bush and, and Cheney, yeah. and, and that was wonderful. Okay, Man. so w which of these guys is the best for comedy? I don't know. I mean, you got 21 to pick from. I know. Well, it, it's not going to be Marianne Williamson. Uh, I, uh, I don't know who would possibly, you know, comics, we get to know so much about these people, not mm -hmm. just through the candidacy, but when they become president, they're omnip, um, omnipresent, you know, they're everywhere and you get to, I mean, after, after Nixon, everybody in America could do a Nixon impression, you know, oh, well, I am not a crook. You know, everybody in America heard that voice. Same thing with Reagan. Yeah. Reagan, people could do, anybody on the street could do a, well, and I see people doing Trump now, much better Trump than I can do, you know, <laughs> and that was George W. Bush. He just <laughs> so we get to know so much about these people. Well, here's, yeah. here's the thing. And I, I, I asked Harry Shearer this about doing impressions once. And he, oh, no, no, not Harry Shearer. Uh, the guy who did Ren, Ren and Stimpy. Um, um, oh, Bill, uh, Billy. Uh, Billy West. I asked Billy West about this because he was doing, he was doing uh, one of the Three Stooges as a young man, and then he was doing him as an old man. He says the harder impression to do is him as a young man. When you get to be an old man, you start getting, a, you become a caricature. Your voice starts becoming a caricature. And it's, you can do an older so-and-so, but you can, it's harder to do a younger so-and-so. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, uh, uh, the guy in the Second City, uh, Dave Thomas, used to do Bob Hope. And he had an old Bob Hope, and he had a new Bob, a young Bob Hope. And he could do both of them. Okay, but he it, the easiest one to do, according to Billy West, was the older version of anybody. So I imagine Biden would be easier to do an impression of, although I don't know how I would do it uh, at this point. Uh, better you could better do an impression of him today than you could do of Biden when he was younger. And so well, I, Buttigieg, I, they can't even do an impression of. Do an impression of Buttigieg. Hi, I'm Pete Buttigieg. You yeah. know? <laughs> Here's my husband. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Hillary was uh, tough. You could never get, uh, at least I could never get her voice, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
Well, uh, you're not a female. Uh, I, but I never heard a woman actually do her very well, although there was a woman on Saturday Night Live who, who did yeah, an Kate essence. Yeah, McKinnon did her. She, her but she job. did the essence. She didn't really do the voice, you know. That's why they're called impressions. Yeah, that's why they're called impressions. Yeah. But anyway, so, so, I mean, it really is... Uh, so there's nobody right now you would say that, that stands out as being That's really good for comedy. Not yet, no. We haven't get you know, the first debate mm -hmm. is in June, and or debates, because they're going to need two nights, I think. I think they're going to go for two nights. Yeah. Have 10 on one night and 11 on the other night. Isn't it getting to be old, though? I mean, that we're doing this so early. You know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't, it shouldn't start till, till January, you know? Yeah. It's on about the same path as the Republicans had in uh, 2016. You know, a couple of debates, and then the pace quickens. Well, it's just that all the news outfits feel that it gives them news. So they push this thing earlier than it should be. I mean, and then we got to go, I guess, because we're, run, we're, run, we're running over our normal allotted time. There's no allotted time. This is the Internet. Um, that... Um, um, uh, we, it, it, my idea has always been we do away with the primaries because all they do is cost the states money. If you want a primary, then you as a party should pay for them, you know, because you're trying to establish who your nominee is going to be, right? Instead, yeah. instead, everybody should say, I'm going to run for president, and they all go to the convention, and they, they play games at the convention, and somebody comes out the winner, and now here's our standard bearer. They're going to run. You could do that when the conventions happen. So you don't need all the primaries. All right? Save a lot of money. Save so how do you, how do you vet all those 21 people want to give a speech at the convention then? Hey, it's their problem. It's the Democrats and who they're going to put up as their nominee and they should not have to deal with it. We shouldn't have to pay millions and millions of dollars here in New York to hold primaries that only benefit their outcome. Okay? So we do away with the primaries, and there was a time we didn't have primaries in this country, okay? So it's not unusual. Secondly, we don't start until those conventions, which is what? July, August, whatever. And then you have like about a three-month time in which people run for president, and then it's over and done with. We don't spend two years going through this and billions and billions of dollars. You're putting thousands of people out of work. What about the people with the bumper stickers? <laughs> the bumper <laughs> sticker companies. Yeah. Yeah. What about all those people? What about all the people at at the you know the poll workers? They get paid for going out and and having people wander into their garage. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're anti job is what you are. Uh, uh, in true true Alex Bennett style, I say, fuck them. <laughs> anyway, nice talking to you once again, Will. This hey, has been a, a great week, Alex Bennett. I'll talk to you in a couple. This was a good one. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Will Durst. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the wizened face of Five our once ever. Still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, I even screwed up more. I had him on a loop. That was the problem. Had him on a loop. So, anyway, I don't know. We're we're having all kinds of little problems here, and I, I I don't know what to say to you folks. I you know uh, uh, if uh, as I said earlier uh, when we started the show, and a lot of you people didn't hear it, uh, we are going to uh, be trying to do a show tonight. But this machine of mine has suddenly decided every now and then to just reboot itself. That sounds like maybe a presidential candidate reboot itself. Uh, and uh, I, um, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So if, if, it, try, if it reboots itself, it's going to take us off. It's going to stop the recording. Uh, what I have of a recording, I will put up. Okay? All right? And um, that should uh, keep you all uh, good and happy, I guess. I would imagine. Uh, it will keep you happy. I'm going to take a loop off. There we go. Okay. And so anyway... If we have a problem tonight, uh, I, I will just, I'll put up on the, on the web just the amount of video of the show as far as it went, okay? And uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll just not come back. So 
And then uh, tomorrow night, if it, uh, it, it, it if I can't seem to get the problem solved, I have an appointment for Friday at the Apple thing. Uh, and uh, although I'm going to check in and see if I can get one earlier. Uh, and, and I don't think it's the machine. I, it, it's something with some software somewhere. There's something that's not working right. But uh, it just uh, shuts down. I run diagnostics on it and ask if uh, it's okay. And um, it comes back saying your diagnostics are perfect. Everything's running okay. All right, who's calling? Oh, okay, it's Phil. It's Phil Meyer. Okay, I can put him up here. Let me All see right. here. And now we're going to have the same problem we had the other night, I'm sure. Uh, How's that? Which is uh, uh, that uh, we're going to uh, be uh, uh, having problems getting people on. So if I can't get you on, okay, just hang up just, and then wait for me to call you back. There'll be a call back. All right? I, it's right. ridiculous. It's it's just everything. You know, I'm really thinking this week of just packing it in for at least a week or two, and just you know, if it isn't one thing, it's another. And now with this machine turning itself off and rebooting, I it's it's probably a program I'm using, and I can't figure out for the life of me which it is. Uh, do you when you when it came back? Here comes I know you. Here comes Josh what? Wheeler. Let's see what okay. happens. Okay, I, I know you 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 set it up as you had it before uh, with the backup. Right. Okay. But do you think that the switch that says automatic do automatic backups might or not backups automatic uh, reboot on uh, uh, updates uh, no. might be no no no. Uh, and now, of course, Ray Renati is not going to be added to the group, so I have to go up here and I have to, uh, and uh, Charlie Wallace, uh, he's not going to be added either, so I then go to the pluses here and I go uh, call Charlie Wallace. Uh, Were you and, able to uh, add, uh, add Josh? Uh, and uh, let me add another one. Let me add Ray Renati. Add. I'm here, Bill. Okay. Yeah, I, I know yeah. you're there. Uh, I know. Okay. Because uh, I called, did he have to call you I, back? I, I called him back. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, Correct. Let me, let me see here. Where are we? Uh, bu, 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 bu. Okay. Uh, let me go to uh, first. I got to put in. Uh, let me see here, Josh, and then I got to put in. Um, uh, hold on. Come on. I hate this. I just hate this. This is just getting to be ridiculous. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Charlie Wallace, okay. And uh, then um, let me see here. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I put Charlie in the wrong one. Oh, well, here. Hold on a second. Let me put Josh Wheeler in the other one. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not in good shape, folks. I'm not in good shape. Uh, let me see here. Now we go to the six group so that I can put in uh, Ray Rom Renati. Um, Ray see. Romano. The Ray Romano. Ray, <laughs> Ray. Let's see, you're you're Gumball sixty one, I guess, huh? Okay. Um Goomba sixty one, is that it? What wait a minute. Go, uh, which are you? What what is your what is yeah, your Yeah, he's Goomba. He is Goomba. Ray Oh, okay. Let me go okay. Uh and uh, let me go okay. And then I think I did where where is he? See? I can't get him to come up. Well, oh, God, this is ridiculous. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Are you Goomba 61? Are you sure of that? Yeah, I guess you are. Yes, now it's okay. Yeah. Now it's okay. There we go. Yeah. Let me do that. Okay. There's something wrong with Skype, and we can't figure out the, the supposedly... Supposedly Skype knows about it, but you know as to whether they'll ever do anything about it, who knows? But it, uh, you know, and you're all on my contact list, so that shouldn't be a problem. Alex, either. I was using Skype this morning. Yeah. Wait, wait, you're breaking up on us, Ray. Ray, you're breaking up. You're breaking up, Ray. Ray. Yeah, you're breaking up on us, Ray. Uh, he can't do anything about it. Yeah. Yeah. Unless he kills his picture. Uh, Skype kept telling me my signal was too weak. 
But I just watched the whole um, D backs baseball game with no problem over three hours. And and, and when you just called, it said your your bandwidth was too weak. That's that's what it comes yeah. back with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, I got the same message, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I got that the other night. It, it's a Skype problem, and of course, leave it to them to take forever to fix it. Uh, somebody I was dealing with, uh, not at Skype, but as a, he's a, he, he works as a technical person for Skype in things like this and dealing with people like you and me. And uh, it was um, pretty, um, he said they were working on it and it's, it's a top priority and they're trying to fix it. But, you know, come on, guys, what are you? You're not... You, 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 I'm saying you're not rocket scientists, but you should be. Uh, you know, let's get this fucking thing fixed. This is ridiculous, you know. And then I got this thing with my machine that it just automatically decides it's going to reboot itself. And chances... I get a hold of Apple. Well, I'm taking and... it down to Apple, but the first media thing I can have is Friday. But it isn't yeah. the machine, I don't think. Because this is it, this type of problem doesn't happen usually from the machine; it happens from software. So uh, it's Think probably the, uh, if something's corrupted when you there's it. some program I'm using that causes this to happen, and I'm going back to the original program that I thought Skype. made it happen. What Skype caused my ca- Skype caused my computer to reboot this morning. Really. I was on a I was on a Skype call and it rebooted. It, it stopped working. The Skype, the sound stopped working, and then the computer rebooted in the middle of the call. Yeah, well, I haven't. And been, it never does it. I haven't been using Skype since this happened, so I never. Uh, I, I haven't oh, okay. really had a problem with Skype. Okay, so, you know, who knows? You know, I mean, yeah. I just, I just, I'm so sick of all of this. You know, if it isn't one thing, it's another. I got the Skype problem right now, and I got the. The, the machine problem, which this wasn't a problem before, but it's a problem now. Uh, what happened to your Mac? Well, I got the Mac back. They replaced oh, okay. almost everything in it. Everything's brand new. But maybe, they, I don't know, maybe they put a defective board in there. I don't know. You know. But all I know is when I run a diagnostic, which you can do on a Mac by just pushing D when you're, you know, when you're, when the machine's starting up, and then it tells you whether you're, you have any hardware problems. And mine said, no problems. You know, you had no problem at all. So I'm going to take the machine down, although I don't know if I have to. Here comes Tony Magno. This means that I'm going to have to call Tony back, of course. Let me see here. Here we go. Add. Okay, Tony. Uh, all you have to do is pick up, and you'll, you'll be... Uh, You'll be on the show, okay? So it says calling Tony Magno. Now, as to whether he responds to that. Oh, there he goes. I I think I saw him. His start. Okay. Um, uh, Tony, are you there, Tony? Uh Oh, you're there. Okay, okay. So you got our our little sign-up thing. Okay, let me see here. Let me go here and put you up there. Yours is Tony Quisp. And uh, I think, uh, come on, this thing's so slow to right put people on that it's ridiculous. Um, come on, come on. Oh no, that's Stein Zeller. I said Tony Quisp. Hold on, Tony Quisp. There we go. Okay, that should work. All right, there he is. Okay, hello, Tony. Hi. Hi. So anyway, I mean, I, I just, you know, What's I keep saying on? to myself, why don't I just take a vacation until this stuff gets fixed, okay? Yeah. Uh, because this is just, this is, you know, I, I, I just want to do a fucking show. Now, here's the good news. I took my, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the old Mac Pro that I have. I may put that back into service if we go down tonight. Um, uh, uh uh, I, I took it out of service, and what I did is I went and I, I sent away for some uh, air spray, right? Oh, yeah, to blow it up. Yeah, and I blew all the dust out of the inside of it, which had been building up for, I don't know, nine years. And, I mean, there was dust going everywhere. 
and I blew it all out of the processors and everything else, you know, and blew they blew all the dust out of the fans and everything, got all the dust out of it. All right? Turned it back on, you can't even hear it. It's so it's quiet. Coming. Because before, it was having to make up for all that dust, and, and that was heating up the machine, and then the fans went to work overtime. Now you, it's as quiet as this machine. So I may put it back into service in the next day or two if I'm having problems with this until we get the problem solved. But it's been driving me nuts trying to figure out what program is causing it. I think I have an idea, but I'm not 100% sure. Because obviously... Ten minutes before we're going to go on the air, the thing killed itself, you know. So who knows, you know. And and hopefully we'll get through the whole show and there won't be any problem. We're already fifty minutes into the show and we're still uh, we're, we're still going uh, crazy here. Anyway, so the uh, what, what was the issue that uh, you were saying you had with um, Will Durst's uh, thing? Because I watched it on your. Uh, on the YouTube. Oh, I just, I, I, I just had to, uh, when I when I put the thing in, I put it on loop so that when I was through oh. the interview, it started it over again. And oh, I see. So I just had to, you know, get out of that. Uh, but uh, that that but uh, all I'm saying is is that you know it's it's one problem after another. Now the, you know the only thing other thing it could be is it's something wrong with one of the parts they replaced. You know, but I don't think. That's the case because I read that this is what's called a kernel panic. Sounds like some kind of guy in Afghanistan who can't take the war too well. Uh, kernel panic. It's called a kernel panic. And it, what it does is the kernel just uh, in, in, the, in the system uh, can't take something and it immediately reboots the machine. Uh, and uh, uh, so something is causing that. And it's probably not a hardware problem. It's probably a software problem somewhere. It's not with uh, the operating system because I reinstalled it today. Okay, so who knows? Did you did you thank Colonel Panic for his service? I thank yes, I thank Colonel Panic for his service. And uh, but it's it's a Colonel Panic, and um, uh, who knows what causes it? I don't know what causes it. Um, if I did, I could I could solve it. But first, I thought it was um, Google, and then uh, the people I did a chat with uh, Apple, and they said, "Well, go to Safari, which I've been using, and it sucks." So I've gone back now to Google, Chrome, and we'll see what happens. You know, we'll see what happens. It might be a program I use to load down torrents, getting even with me. Uh, oh, uh, you think it's running in your back? Well, it, it, I used it before, and it never caused problems, but, you know, you never know. I mean, before I had, uh, d you know, a different CPU in here with, uh, d you know, d 12 other cores, and they probably tolerated it better than this one did or something. I don't know. You know. When I was using Napster, yeah, Napster I had on all the time back in the day. I was ripping everything. And sometimes I just shared files. So it was always my computer was like an old one. I was stealing so much music, but it was crappy quality, though. Yeah. But I was just happy to get it, though. Yeah. Until you, you, you were I happy to, to steal before. to steal from people. Until, well, until in, in, the, in, in the early days of Napster, uh, yeah. it. The, the jury was out on whether you were stealing or not. We were sharing. Uh, I had the CDs. I would put them on tray. And then, uh, but you know, the thing about Napster is, I found music that I, I hadn't thought about in years, or you know, didn't even know about. And uh, it was it was a nice experience. I don't steal yeah. music. So. Uh, yeah. I, I I used to, you could listen, but not download. In fact, I, if I download. stole music, I wouldn't know what to steal anymore because I don't know half the shit they're playing. You know. Oh, yeah, and I you don't want any of the shit that they're playing, <laughs> you know, because it is shit. <laughs> the only way I know who these people are is uh, watching TMZ, you know, and they're all yeah. getting arrested. They get arrested. They are all getting arrested. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, but um, uh, so anyway, that's that's that. Also, uh, yeah, today. Um, uh, we, there was, a, we, we, you know, I got the the judge in our case. Did I tell oh, you this the other day? You said yeah. to the me judge came out with a with a, with her uh, determination on whether she should give a summary judgment or not, and then wrote this twenty five page 
thing on why they shouldn't get summary judgment, summary judgment. But the thing, according to my lawyer, was really good to us. It was really positive for us. So he How had much a, did this positive news cost you in attorney's <laughs> fees? Oh, I don't know. I was on the phone with him yesterday for an hour, so I figured that's 400 bucks right there. <laughs> yeah, and, and if he read the judgment, uh, this, uh, the, uh, the, the, the uh, findings, uh, that could have been another... Four thousand dollars. Well, I'm probably reading it. You know, I hope he's. I hope he's a speed reader. You know, yeah. uh, not when they bill by the hour. <laughs> but anyway, he um, he uh, uh, checked this whole thing out, and he, he called us yesterday. And what he said to us was, um, you know, congratulations. You know, you're like in the catbird seat. And so they had a mediation today, and while nothing happened at the mediation. Uh, they all agreed that we have to be contended with, you know, that we're the, we're the, you know, somebody's going to have to pay us so we can then pay the, the, the but then we turn the money over to the, uh, uh, to the, a lot of the money over to the landlord uh, for the time that was spent here, you know, that we didn't pay rent. Uh, so it, all that has to be negotiated, but we'll come out okay. We'll, it, we'll come out I, I don't know that you owed the money. I think that the guy, the sports figure that you rented from, is the guy that owes the money. Well, he didn't, no, but he didn't have a lease at that point. In fact, his lease ran out two months before ours did. <laughs> well, <so> he, <laughs> he's water. He signed a lease with us. He's a sports figure. He was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was a basketball he's player. A sports. Basketball player for the oh. Knicks, yeah, for the Knicks for a couple of years. Oh. wasn't wasn't a big one, but uh, wasn't a big one. Went to the West. Uh, but anyway, so oh, wrong. Um, uh, <laughs> we, we, it looks like we have you have a pretty good case. We'll probably walk away with a few bucks, but a lot a lot of that money will be have to negotiate it back to the to the people who run the apartment building. But the thing that that the judge said is, well, you know, you say you want. So to be recompensed for you know the money lost during that time, yeah. and yet there's no way for us to figure out what the proper rent is because um, uh, it, uh, everybody was lying all the way around. The, the 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 landlord was lying from the beginning. So back in the day when uh, this guy first took possession of the apartment and thought, it, and they said it was non-rent stabilized, it had a rent stabilized price of five hundred dollars. Mm, wow, that's you got a big apartment too. Huh? That's yeah, nice. It, it, well, then they didn't five, register five it for something like eight years, and when they finally did, they said uh, it's rent stabilized at twenty one hundred fifty dollars, and the judge said <laughs> that's not right either. Because you can't suddenly just turn around and not do the increments that you would do from 500. So my lawyer figured out how much this apartment is worth, rent stabilized. It's rent stabilized price today. Okay? So if we started paying rent tomorrow, the legitimate rent we should pay is, are you ready? $900. Oh my wow. God, you should sign a lease. Can you well, they, they have to. Give, they'll have to give us a lease. Yes. See, that's what I would shoot for. That's but, smart. But, but yeah, he he know. says that if you take the five hundred and then you take the uh -huh. couple of years that they didn't register it, and then you start picking it up at that point at five hundred, and then you start adding on two and a half percent every two years, and blah 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 blah, you come out to nine hundred dollars a month. That's that's a buy. And that's what the rent stabilized price should be on this apartment. Uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I'm lucky I don't make two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year because if we made over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year, uh, you don't I qualify. We wouldn't qualify for rent stabilization. So uh, this is the first time being a little on the poorer side. I'm we're, we're happy, you know. So, you know, who knows what's going to happen, and who knows how much we're going to owe? I, probably we're going to owe five hundred dollars a month for the last six years, but that doesn't come to a lot of money. When you figure what I, what we're owed is something close to ninety or a hundred thousand dollars, 
Well, you had attorney's fees also that you should be able to recover. Yeah, well, that's what we're going to try and do. Yeah. And uh, what about the treble damage stuff? That is uh, something that we, again, you have to prove in court. You have to prove that the guy really didn't know that the apartment was rent stabilized when he did this. And the fact was that we kind of have proof that he did know it was rent stabilized when he rented to us mm -hmm. because he had signed rent, by that time, rent stabilized leases at 2150. So he yeah. knew it was rent stabilized. Now, I don't, you know, so you have to prove that he wasn't ignorant of the law, you know, and that he did it for a profit, which he did. I didn't think that ignorance of the law was a. Uh uh, defense. It, it is where Trump's concerned, so I guess it is for everybody else. <laughs> you know, um, you know. I mean, it, it, it was it, you know. So, so that's what we're you know we're dealing with here. You know, it's a very very silly situation. Who knows? You know. So uh, that's that. <laughs> So, not so, bad. Oh, no, not bad at all. I mean, somehow we're going to come out okay. It's just a matter of how okay are we going to come out. And uh, uh, the guy who owns this apartment wants three thousand to settle. He he'll settle for three thousand dollars from three hundred thousand dollars from the uh, from the uh, uh, landlord. In which case, we're going to want more because we want a check written to us first, and then he can get the rest. All right. How much you gonna? How much you want to bet that the set, that the end result is you get the apartment and those two guys walk away and nobody pays nothing? I think uh, it probably will be close to that. Although we would like to see us get our, of course, our, yeah. our, our our legal fees taken care of. Well, we also feel that you know it's not us who have played this thing the clock out like it has been played out. I mean, yeah. just, you know, a, a year and a half ago, um, uh, the guy who owns this apartment said he wanted a summary judgment, summary judgment. So that meant we had to file a whole big piece of paper, and, and, and uh, the, 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 then the, the, the landlords had to countersue, and then the judge had to have it for over a year until she came out with this 25-page decision. Uh, all that takes time. You know, and so as I said to him yesterday, I said, we would have been happy to just start paying rent the next day if everybody just said, well, fuck it, you know. Yeah. But everybody's decided to put their arms together like this and, you know, go, we're not budging. You know, this landlord never budges, you know. And by the way, my... my, my uh, lawyer told us that and it's also it's in the judge's filing basically that these landlords are considered one of the worst landlords in all of New York <laughs> you know they have a really bad reputation for trying to hinky things you know and play skirt around the laws and so uh, is this uh, drum for properties no it's not it's not, <laughs> it's not. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I don't understand it. There are a bunch of Hasidim out in uh, out in Brooklyn, and I don't understand it because how greedy do you have to be, you know? So, uh, whatever. You would, think that, you would think if the guy, like you said, wasn't so greedy, he could have settled. He could have got some rent, and everybody he would have been happy. He, he was he, happy. He'd be how greedy? He's got an apartment that he should be getting eight grand a month for, and he's probably going to get nine hundred dollars. That's you know, <laughs> and, he's and, not happy. And, and we're here for the rest of our lives. At nine hundred bucks, we ain't moving. Right. You know, yeah. uh, but but that would yeah. be the the fair and proper rent stabilized uh, price. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, you know, we, we're in a good we're in a good place. It's just that it's a question of, and at the end of the day, how much money is going to be left over for us? In other words, once we pay the landlord what he thinks he's due, blah, 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 you know. Plus, uh, we can also charge uh, the guy who rented us the apartment something like, it's 9% it's per year on the money that we paid. Did he hide all his assets? 
Uh, he can try, but it, it, it's kind of, if you do that, you're really in violation of the law. Well, you know, over the years, it's been five years, is, uh, you know, it's getting, getting uh, the assets into protection, uh, is, you know, and then he just goes bankrupt. Yeah, but no, but if you, you uh, uh, well, he can't, from what my lawyer said, it, it, it would, it, it's a suspicious and hinky thing for him to do that. You know. Uh, you know, he sold his house two years ago, and, uh, you know, he invested the money in an ostrich farm, and, you know, he, he lost it, and, you know, now, uh, hey, sorry. Lost you know. all his money in the ostrich farm. Duda, yeah. duda. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Paul Manafort went to jail, and ostrich suits aren't really in style anymore. So. Yeah. <laughs> they will be when he gets out. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> old as new. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So, um, so that's what you know. It's just that uh, this kind of thing for people who don't have money. I mean, we're lucky. Marjorie has an apartment that has gained in in uh, value since she bought it. She bought it for about one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. It is now worth close to four hundred thousand uh, dollars. She gets a, a loan against it, and we're using that to pay the lawyers. So we can afford it. We found a way to pay for it. But when people didn't don't have this sort of money, you see, this is how these landlords exist. They exist on the fact that go ahead, sue me. Do you know how much that's going to cost you? You know, and and most people will go, okay, we give up. You know, we give yeah. up. Uh, in this country, it's how much justice can you afford? It, yeah. So I mean. I really think that where a case like this is concerned, I mean, we're, we're kind of the innocent party. We're in the middle of this whole thing. I mean, the landlords cheated, uh, cheated, cheated the, the guy we rented from. The guy we rented from cheated us. We didn't cheat anybody. So we should, we should be getting all our legal fees taken care of as we go along, you know, just because we should be able to defend ourselves against this. But if we couldn't, We'd be out of here. We wouldn't be living here. And these guys would be fighting over an empty husk of an apartment, you know? So. And, and you think that doctors make too much money. Well, you know, I, I, I don't think doctors make too much money. It used to be the case. It's not the mm. case anymore. Doctors yeah. used to make a fortune, but now there's so many costs now that most of them can't even afford to have an office. Yeah. You know, they have to go to HMOs and they have to go to the hospitals and be doctors there. Um, yeah. So it, it's not that easy. Uh, yeah, I, I, I got uh, my Delta care uh, uh, that I'm getting through Kaiser and uh, what do I got? Um, uh, Medicare, mm -hmm. and uh, which starts on the 1st of June. And the doctor that they recommended is not the doctor that I use. My doctor's not on the thing. And I think it's going to be a waste of $20 a month. Um, unless I just go to this guy and have him clean my teeth a no, couple of times well, a year. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where, where, where's the doctor? I mean, there's only one doctor you can use? That's what they said. I guess uh, I can go on some website and see other ones that are available. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, they assigned me uh, Ahmed. Um, oh I can't pronounce well, it. Well, usually I've had, uh, with Delta, I went to a dentist, and she would send the bill to De Delta, and I would pay at the, at the office. Was she in the program? No. No. Oh, she wasn't in the Delta program? It, well, it, she, it was something where we, we, we let Delta know that I had paid for it, and then they sent yeah. me a check for whatever they... Well, under this huh. thing, the doctor I went to to have the tooth pulled was associated with Delta Dental, and so I didn't pay... I don't think I paid anything when I left. Uh, and they sent me a thing today from Delta saying, we're paying... We just, we're pay, we've just paid $300 to your doctor, and uh, you owe $350, and I'm sure right, they probably 50, 50. they have my credit card online on on uh, yeah you there so they probably just charge the credit card and I'm done okay but they paid almost fifty percent of having the tooth pulled that was pretty damn good yeah 
you know? and uh, you still got twenty two hundred dollars left to. Uh, well, you know, I, I spent I, I spent about three hundred for uh, something else uh, for uh, uh, yeah for uh, I don't know, a filling or something I don't know. But anyway, uh, consequently, I I am. Yeah, I have money to do the the, the implant or part part of the implant or most of the you know the half they take care of half the implant, okay? So yeah. that'll be it's a four thousand dollar implant, it's two thousand dollars from them. So you know. Mm. you know. Yeah, my warehouse man's getting an implant. Uh, he um, he took Friday off. They they did the post. And he says, uh, and, uh, I thought he said three months. He has to go back, and they'll finish it. Maybe it's six months. And yeah. he says three grand. Wow. But, uh, only, they, they, they used to be six. Only three grand? Mine was estimated at four grand. Yeah. Yeah. But you're in New York. Yeah, but but uh, three grand, that's not bad, you know. I mean, if you have dental insurance if, uh, uh, and you have as much as I have, uh, it's fifteen hundred dollars yeah. uh, that they'll take care of. So uh, twenty five hundred, didn't you say? Well, no, but I said it, it would it be half of the cost oh, yeah. of the of the implant. Yeah. Uh, you know, we talk about we always talk about uh, uh, medical stuff. medical stuff, and and especially in the, in the area of medical stuff, we talk about uh, you know uh, single payer health care. I really think we need the same thing with dental. I really do. I think dental is very important, and I think, you know, some some guy's missing two teeth in the front of his mouth. Is he going to be able to find work? <laughs> you know. Oh, oh yeah. Just, as long as he doesn't have to whistle. Well, he no. He, he all he has to do is get a maga cap, and he'll look like uh, you know, just like things. Are it is. Right. I mean, it's you know, you're right because every time you go to the dentist, it's like. It's like it's more than a regular doctor. It's well, like, they, oh, do, I, I, they, they do better than regular doctors. You try they, going to a veterinarian. Because regular doctors have to deal either with Medicare or the insurance companies. And by the way, if you think Medicare is terrible, ask any doctor. He'll tell you he'd rather deal with Medicare than with the, with the insurance companies. You know, the insurance companies won't pay any more than Medicare will, but Medicare pays off faster and without question, you know. Ah, oh, here comes Patrick. Let me see here. We may have to call him back. Yep, we're going to have to call Patrick back. Hold on a second, folks. Just takes a moment here. I just go there, and I go add. And uh, uh, we sh he should be coming in any moment now. Um, uh, this calling back stuff isn't a bad thing. Maybe there are people you don't want to talk to, and you don't have to call well, them back. Well, uh, pa Patrick Blazik has just joined, so let me put Patrick in one of our squares. Uh, Patrick, uh, let's see, Darth Pat is the name he uses, and hey. here comes Darth Pat. Hello, Darth Pat. Hi. Hi. Yes, Ray. We should have a Hollywood Squares night. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be sent to cool. be sent square. <laughs> Hey, yeah. we the yeah. uh, the the one after this looks like the Brady Bunch uh, squares, you know. Yeah, when, yeah. When they, you know. yeah. that's your bed. It ain't bed. Yeah. yeah. Bill, did you go to the? Did you go to the vet to get your 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 teeth fixed? My, uh, no, but my dog did, and oh, okay. uh, twice. And it's a good thing I got that dog insurance that uh, wow. what's his name that uh, Rob told me about mm -hmm. uh, the healthy oh, paws. I gotta get that. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. gotta get that because my dog's getting old and all kinds of stuff. She can hardly walk right now. Yeah, uh, I yeah. I got it. They usually take them when they're a little younger, but uh, I'll I'll tell you uh, the, okay. the deal. Yeah. Hey, right. hey, you can always try. I'm I'm paying like thirty six yeah. bucks a month, and oh, okay. uh, and believe me, I got Probably my money's late. worth. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So where are you walking, Ray? Uh, at Baylands again. Uh huh. Yeah, there's the sunset again. Oh, how beautiful. Look at that. We got a yeah. full screen. Yeah. 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 It's so nice. Yeah. I love it here. Yeah. A lot of IEDs out there. In my backyard. Huh? A lot of IEDs out there. <laughs> yeah, just a few, you know. You just got to watch your step. Yeah. Yeah. There's some, uh, you know, Ahmeds running in and out of the bushes. But, uh, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. They don't bother you. Yeah. 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 No, I, oh, those guys? No, those are those are software engineers. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. 
looking for a job. Hey, got a visa. <laughs> yeah, found you fake. <laughs> yeah. You hey, know. did you talk about this uh, this Yang guy? Did you talk about this Yang uh, guy at all? No, we haven't talked about him yet. I've been I've been listening to other interviews. This guy's great. Well, you know, I like he's a class act. I don't totally. agree. Totally, so smart. Yeah, I, I don't agree yeah. with a lot of the stuff that he's talking about, but yeah. you know what? I like the guy, and uh, I if, too. if I was a Democrat, I would vote for him. Hell, I, I'm voting for. He's my favorite man. That guy, that guy's sharp. Yeah, he's not he political. is sharp. He's just like trying to actually think of ways to yeah. solve problems. Yeah. Like, he's just yeah. not yelling Trump this, Trump that. No, he's actually oh, never. he's a quality guy. Yeah, you know, he's great. I love him. You know, uh, yeah. but he probably doesn't have a chance. Uh, no, I, I, probably I, not. He's too honest and all that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. His fundraiser, probably has nothing in his closet. Yeah, no, I know. He's a very wealthy guy. Yeah, and he has, probably has no skeletons, I don't think. No, he just no, doesn't I, seem I like a guy who... Yeah, well, I get, yeah. Uh, like I was saying earlier, I mean, you don't have skeletons in your closet when you don't have a record, okay? Yeah. You know, yeah. so so a guy like Biden, hey, they got a lot of stuff they can get on him because you know, I mean, look yeah. at look at him. He's, he has no he's, position. He says, "Oh, what's well, my position well, today?" No, oh, let me let me look at this. You know, but yeah. Biden, you're right. He doesn't. Biden has has a difficulty in in being yeah, able staying to, away. <laughs> stop it, will you? <laughs> let's not let's let's talk in practicalities and not in put downs. You know, I think we've gotten uncivil enough about all. Well, if you yeah, want a civil just, guy, you'd like Andrew Yang. Did you watch the uh, interview no, I, uh, with I, I'm Shapiro sorry, that I sent there, you? There are too many people running, and I'm getting to the point where I just don't give a fucking well, diddly he, fuck. He's, a, he's actually a quality guy. If, if you know, Granted, there are things that he wants that will never get put through, but uh, I, I like him. Yeah. Well, uh, he's the only if, if you like him, I guess that's a reason for me to hate him, actually. Well, not well, necessarily. Actually, I, Ray likes him. He's not I bad. do, and I, I couldn't believe that, you, that, that Phil, that you sent me that. And you, I was like, yes, Phil! I love this guy. I mean, that was, all, I mean, that was blown away. Honestly. Yeah, well, let, let's be honest yeah. about it. He doesn't have a fucking chance in hell. Okay. You never know. That's, that's what they like. said about Trump. <laughs> huh? And Obama. They said that about Obama. Yeah. You know, uh, you know he's this guy. He's such a classy guy, and uh, he's he's uh, he's he's not political in in the sense that you know that he's that he's out to chop somebody's head off. He's just a uh, he's just a good guy, hmm. and uh, he's smart, smart. so yeah. smart. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let, let's be honest. He doesn't have a fucking chance of a snowball in hell. No, he uh, doesn't. Okay, so let's uh, talk about practicality. We'll annihilate here, him. Phil. Well, you know who else is You're running? Right. Uh, your New York mayor, uh, Buda. Uh, not <laughs> uh, what's his? Uh, de Blasio no, 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 said de Blasio. he might he might run, uh, but true to New York, this is a Saturday Night Live line. True to New York, he he's he's going to run, but uh, not on uh, weekends and evenings. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very New York joke, folks. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's um, yeah, he's 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 talking about running. Uh, he's not a very good mayor, is he? I, you know, I, I my friend Shecky doesn't like him. I don't like. I, him. I, I, never I like I've him. I've, I've <laughs> listened to some of the things he says about policy, I mean, and I like him for for at least his thinking. I I just don't. A lot of people seem to think he's kind of a crook, you know, which. Hey, when you're in a mayor, you're a mayor. You usually are, you know, in this city. You know, so. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I mean, I just uh, uh, did you did you hear this thing in mm -hmm. Arizona? They're trying to pass a law making pro uh, pornography a health hazard. Did you hear about this, uh, Charlie? I, I thought it was a marital aid. No. <laughs> Char Charlie, did you hear about this? Make LSD. Uh, I heard about it just in passing. I haven't read anything about it. Let me see. If, let me see if I can find. It. I hate to use the internet here because I'm afraid that I will blow myself off the air. But if I, I do, if I if I go off the air, I'm not coming back Boy. tonight. Let me just say that. Uh, Arizona. Uh, era, 
Arizona. Easy. <laughs> oh, let's say porn. Here we go. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, it passes a bill. Okay. Republican-backed measure in Arizona State Senate to formally denounce pornography as a public health crisis has passed. Uh, the resolution, which does not require the governor, it doesn't require the governor's signature for approval, will now go to the Secretary of State to be certified, according oh to the text of the bill. You know what the this is going to do. Let me finish. The le yeah. legislation claims that pornography perpetuates a sexual toxic environment that damages all areas of our society. It goes on to claim, without any medical citation, that pornography is potentially biologically addictive and requires increasingly <laughs> shocking material for the addiction to be satisfied, uh, uh, leading to extreme degradation. The societal damage of pornography is beyond the capability of the individual to address alone the measure states. So, uh, Hey, Alex. What? You think we can go on, you think we, people can go on disability for it? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. You, you never know, do you? Well, yeah. you know, you know what's going to happen? Now that they're making this illegal, the cartels are going to start bringing uh, pornography <laughs> uh -oh, over instead of drugs. Yeah. Come on. You know. You never know, I Amy. Mean, who would have thought? This country's great. Yeah, I heard they're going to make mushrooms legal in another state. Uh, uh, Den uh, uh, Colorado. Everything's going to be free over there, son. I, Just tax I, everything, I said. I've, I've got to go to Colorado in July. So where the, where the, mount, where the mountains aren't the only out. thing that's high. Thank you very much. I'll be here all week. Yeah. Um, uh, exactly. yes. Pat, Patrick's got his hand up. I don't know yes, Patrick. Him. Oh, yes. I, ca I can't see Patrick. I, now I can see him. Yeah. I... I, I yeah, I, I, you know, I have two things to look at. I have the Skype to look at, but that oh, here comes Ray Renati back again. He, I guess, was, uh, and I am gonna have to call him back. Hey, yeah, I, I hate this fucking piece of shit Skype. Um, he should. Does, be... does Arizona have? Well, uh, wait a minute, wait a your audio is given. It's trying overtaking to something. Uh, Ray, you got to put Ray. your audio on mute, otherwise no, it's no. it's it's preventing us from hearing Patrick. Yes, Patrick, go ahead. Does, does Arizona have a way to regulate that? I mean, it with the internet in the United States, it's not controlled anywhere. I mean, if you're in China, maybe, but um, or in Dubai or whatever, but. What are they going to do? I mean, I understand from a religious standpoint, there are many uh, in the religious realm that consider it to be, you know, a, a hazard to your health, so to speak, and at which point they can counsel you and perhaps persuade you, but what is the fucking state going to do? They'll have licensed dispensaries like they do with medical marijuana. And you go in there and you can get six pages at a time. <laughs> this is really good shit. This is the nude shit. <laughs> I can't believe what's going on in the country. Yeah. Uh, this is indica porn. Uh, anyway, uh, it, it, you know, um, uh, it. You know, really, it, it's not a statement of law. They didn't make a law. In other words, you're not going to jail because you've got porn, okay? Oh, okay? But what they're making is a statement that porn is addictive and porn, you know, but they have no medical evidence to prove that. Yeah, how are they proving it? Yeah, now porn is addictive. It's like saying I'm addicted to comic books. You know, sex is addictive. You know, I mean, I got only for Tiger Woods. I, no, I, 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 I had a pretty good habit going there for a long time. Yeah. You know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think there was a, a there was a waking five minutes that I didn't think about sex. All right, so, and um, you know, and and his wife was pretty hot. You know, you think she wasn't? Uh, you know, doing it for him. His wife was was hot. Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. No, I look. You know. I had always have had a theory, and it's a, it, it's kind of a crappy theory actually. If you want my opinion about it, where uh, 
Uh, you could take a guy who's got the most beautiful woman in the world, and he will still cheat on her because it 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 it's the same old pussy. Okay, does that make sense? You know. Uh, yeah. So, I, mean, I, I I I I don't know what other way to put it. The guys kind of need variety, you know. And and I, you know, I I. I well, I'm not going to go further. I'll sound like an asshole. That's what porn is for. That's what porn is for, exactly. Can't smoke it. You can't smoke it, no. I mean, you, you can dress up to put... The only thing that I think is wrong with porn... You know, the only thing that I think is wrong with porn is that it does create unrealistic expectations of what the sexual act is. Because... What they're doing is an idealization of the sexual act or the idealization of fantasies, but not the way it normally exists in a relationship. Every relationship is different, and they have different ways of playing it out. You know, so I think we just lost uh, Ray again. Uh, he muted. I no, I think we lost <laughs> him. Frozen. Oh no, I, well, he's still there. Oh, he's still there. Yeah, it's just it, it, we're, we're, there isn't very good I'm service. Just, I'm sorry. There isn't very good service where you walk. Uh, unfortunately. Yeah. I can hang up if you want. No, no. it's okay. It's okay. Just oh, okay. stay where you are. Uh, we'll get better. Yeah. Once you once you get to the gym or wherever you're going, it'll probably be much better. And once you get that fiber optic in Palo Alto, I have a petition out. Did he send you the petition? Yeah. We've had it here. It, like, it goes to the houses. Oh, yeah. Uh, I I went to Wave today. They raised my internet charge to 108 bucks. I was paying 80 something. And all I have what, is, what is, you know, what is just. What is Wave? Wave is like Comcast or any, any of those. and uh, But Wave had the one gig down and I don't know what it is up it's not nowhere near a uh, gig it's more like 30 or 50 and uh, so they raised my bill I had a special deal for a year well the special deal was up and since I pay automatically I didn't notice it until I opened the bill and for the last two months I've been paying 108 instead of 80 something so uh, I went into the office because they don't answer their phones, uh, you know, when you uh, when you you know have these kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. And the gal got me the same service for fifty eight bucks. I, I was happy, you know. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. So knock fifty bucks off the bill, and uh, 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 it's a good internet. Yeah. Oh, now you love it. You didn't love it it's when you thought you not were, for one hundred and eight uh, bucks. Not for one hundred and eight bucks <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Until I had the same okay. thing. They, they lowered my internet and they gave me a home phone for free. So. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. They uh, they would have given me the basic TV, uh, but um, uh, I I have uh, Sling, so I was well, happy. Well, my initial my initial deal with uh, FiOS is set to expire in about three months or so. Just call no, them no, no, before it no, expires. No, no, no. What they're going to do is they're going to say, well, we're raising the rates or whatever, if they say that. And I just yeah. go, you do know there's another cable company in this town, don't you? <laughs> and yeah. they're, they're ready and willing to take my business. They'll be down here faster than you can, you know. And, and by the way, they don't have a, a, a basic uh, a limit of time for me to have to sign up and all that. And I can still get everything I've got now. Uh, for approximately the same price. Now, I don't want to change. I like FiOS. I like what you offer. But if you don't want my business, uh, there is another company in town. And they'll give, uh, you, they'll give you all the breaks you want. You can ask them what the, what the new deal is. And, uh, you know, I mean, they, they don't usually have a problem giving you the deal. You just have to ask. Yeah. And, yeah. But, what, you know, you just ask what deals have you got going right now. Yeah. You know, so. Eh. Yeah, you know, uh, no deal for you. No, no deal for you. <laughs> no, no deal. For yeah, you. now you pay what? What thirty six hundred dollars a year for your internet and TV? No, I pay a less than I think less. It's not even three hundred a month, or uh, oh, that's it, the old. No, deal. It, no, that was the old one. I'm paying two thirty six a month, two thirty nine yeah. a month for, uh, you know, all this bandwidth I've got. 
you know, and all yeah. the channels we've got. And Shit, you can get a two-year-old Cadillac for that kind of money. Y yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is kind of cheap. I could I could pay a lawyer for a year. Uh, yeah. You know, but but it, it, but that it, it's not terrible, especially because uh, you know, as old people, that's what that's our that's our form of entertainment is TV. You know, so. mm -hmm. not in Arizona. You, you know. You don't, you don't get the porno. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. You can't get the porn channel anymore. Yeah. yeah. So, we, 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 you know, and um, I, I just think, uh, you know, uh, they, 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 won't, they won't raise my price. That's for damn sure. Because I yeah. do have an alternative, huh? you know. And the place is already wired. When, when they came in with the files, they simply mm -hmm. took the wiring that the cable company had already done and rejiggered it a little bit. Uh, and I thought uh, is, is the other company fiber optic? No, no. Oh. Uh, and I did notice a big difference in the video picture, much better, really. Uh, yeah. But the thing was that I was kind of bothered by the whole fiber optic thing because I went, well, it's just fiber optic to the box outside the door. No, it's not to the door. It's fiber optic all the way into the back of this desk here oh that's it the fiber goes right into a box here and then from that box it then went out to Is the rest copper? of the cable the rest of the copper cable in the apartment because that means anybody can have fiber optic as long as you got a, an extension cord what do you mean well, if you only have a thing that goes to a box, no, and then no, your no, box no, goes no, to no, 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 the box is in the my the fiber comes right to the right to a box in back of this monitor I'm looking at oh. here. Oh, yeah. oh, it doesn't go to copper. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, then from this box it goes out to copper around the apartment. Oh. Okay. Okay, in the apartment itself, yeah, but, but the what's coming into the apartment is fiber. The actual fiber. I, I you can't even you can't really see it, but it's right up there. It's a little. Mm -hmm. It's a little cord. A little uh, cord is it? Where is it? I, I don't know yeah. where it goes. The one that says pull pull to eject. Yeah, but it's a, it's a smaller <laughs> cable than the yeah. normal you know Cat five or Cat six that people would have. Yeah. So uh, you know, yeah, but anyway. So what else is happening in the news? More another another school shooting. Yeah. How well, how many of these do we have to have before we say we're fed up? Huh? Well, they got the two shooters and only one dead and eight wounded. Oh, so only they're, one they're dead. Getting they're, yeah, they're getting better. Yeah, they're getting getting better. Yeah, no, either that or the shooters are getting worse. Well, that's a possibility. That's a possibility. Well, I mean, when when do we finally say enough with the guns already? I don't know. For me, I, I had a big gun setback this week. Uh, the place that I normally go shooting on Sundays, mm -hmm. they red tagged it because of lead. Uh, I guess that, the was guys that, was uh, that a, air was that, was that a high school? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it was. Uh, it's an indoor shooting range, and I and I would go just about every Sunday for two hours, and I'd shoot. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, uh, so they, they red tagged it last week. I, I think that it's somewhat bizarre that a shooting range would get red tagged for lead poisoning. Uh, the guy had these air scrubbers and they didn't work. You know, they're supposed you, to do some sort of negative air. You didn't get my air. joke there, Phil. Oh, all right. Yeah. But, that it's uh, ironic that they would have lead poisoning. Yeah, <laughs> well, only it depends on which end of the target they stand on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I mean, what are we? Do? I haven't heard. We haven't heard from Josh tonight. He's been quiet. Uh, what, what are we going to do about these guns? What are we going to do? Should we, maybe, well, maybe we should start a movement to repeal the Second Amendment. Well, you you can do that. I mean, at this point, I guess my answer to what we're going to do is evidently nothing because. Nothing has happened as of yet. Like, you know, you asked how many of these before we get sick of it, and apparently it's going to take more. I mean, because, you know, nothing has happened, and this this is just one more, and uh, I, I don't know how many people uh, died. Uh, I thought I heard at least one. one. And You know, I mean, I, I'm not trying to be insensitive, but I think people just say, well, you know, that's that's not too bad. You know, 
mean, you know, I mean, there's normally a lot well, more. Well, what, what, what the problem that we that we have is that it becomes the new normal, right? You know. That it becomes the new normal, and and this is what we just accept. Oh well, there was another shooting today. Oh hey, only one person got killed. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's terrible. I mean, you know, that's that's what I mean. Is it's just it's awful that that that's how it goes. I mean, you know, I, obviously I don't I don't have the answer. I mean, you know, I, I'm not particularly in favor of you know banning all weapons or all guns or or, or anything like that, uh, but I'm not in favor of just having them, uh, you, you know, just out in the open as much as they are. I mean, it's it's obviously an issue. I mean, and if anyone says it's not an issue, you know, they're entitled to that opinion, of course. But I, I mean, I just disagree because it's just it's just too easy for people to get weapons, you know, that shouldn't have weapons and. and there's there's just almost there's no limitation i mean you know and i've talked about this before i mean you know it's heaven forbid in, in in some areas of the country that you want to buy you know liquor on sunday but by god you can go down the street and buy a weapon I mean, that's not going to be a problem at all because you know the the gun shop is open on sunday and you can buy an assault rifle and blow away 50 people in 10 seconds if you'd like to buy five or six of those on sunday you're more than welcome to but you know, heaven forbid you buy a bottle of whiskey at noon. I mean, you know, so I, I see things like that as an issue. That That's a problem. That's a societal problem. Well, I mean, how about buying a bottle of whiskey and a gun? That's a nice combination, right. isn't right. it? Huh? That's a you know, I mean, so. Yeah. Crazy. I, mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, obviously, I don't, I don't have the answer, but, I mean, I think the answer would have to start with we have we have to start moving toward something that's going to be painful for a lot of people which is some of these weapons are just not gonna just shouldn't be allowed to be out there i mean it, and i mean it's just and i don't think there's a constitutional issue there i mean the, the government does have some right to regulate weapons i mean you know so again i said i'm not in favor of rounding them all up and throwing them in a pot and melting them down uh, some people are i mean i you know that's a legitimate uh uh, okay, but bar, uh, barring, wait, bar, barring so that, barring that, why don't we do what they do in England? That if you want to have a gun, you can have a gun, but it has to be kept at a, a gun club. Yeah. Uh, it has to be kept at a sports club, and uh, uh, then if you want to go out and do shooting and whatever, you can do it from the from the gun club. Uh, right. And that's the way guns are, 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 you are allowed to have guns in England. Of course, I'm sure that uh, uh, Phil doesn't like that idea, right, Phil? Uh, that that's right. I think that the issue is a mental health issue, and it's and uh, being the victims that most left or left wing people are, that they don't want to admit that they have a problem, and that it's not the gun. They'd rather blame the inanimate object, and so uh, you know, and if it wasn't a gun, it'd be a knife, and if it wasn't a knife, it would be one of those bombs with a pressure cooker, uh, and the nails, and uh, you know. Uh, or it be sarin gas, or or, or something, it, or it be a a, a Mack truck. Uh, you know, you can't just keep blaming guns. Taking taking the guns away is just another step that totalitarian governments want to do to you. Look at Venezuela. No, if, it, it, if they took the guns away from those people, and look, they're running them over in the streets. Uh, you know, this this is our constitution gave us the right to bear arms to keep totalitarian governments like some of the ones that we see around the world from happening here. Is that the original reason behind it, Josh? Uh, I don't, I, that's, that's way too uh, much of a simplification. I, I mean, I don't believe that the original intent of the amendment was necessarily with uh, this narrative that you hear a lot from, you know, some in the NRA, and that is that if you don't allow the people to have weapons, as soon as you allow it, the government is going to, you know, basically round you up and make you all slaves. I mean, I just, I don't, I don't believe, and I've always argued, you know, and I know some people that think that way. I mean, 
you know, but I always just say, you know, like to, to what end to make you slaves to, to what? I mean, I, I, I just, yeah. it's, uh, Charlie has his so hand unrealistic in my mind. Char Charlie has his hand up. Charlie. I just want to point out that it is illegal for us mm -hmm. to possess sarin gas. It's illegal for many people to possess automatic weapons as well, uh, or uh, dynamite, or uh, uh, you know, uh, weapons of mass destruction. You mean you know, I can't? I just, just, wait, wait just because it's illegal, wait a minute, who Phil. are you going to stop? You're going to stop Phil. the law-abiding people, or are you going to stop the bad guys? Phil, do you mean do you mean that I that I can't uh, have dynamite if I want to have dynamite? Uh, no, you can't. You, ha you need a destructive uh, license, a destructive something permit. Uh, I never heard about that. I always thought you could. I could just buy dynamite if I wanted to buy dynamite. No, I don't think you can. No, not really. Well, no. You should be able to. You should be able to. We all have the right to bear dynamite. I yeah, C4. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, 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 you know, if, if we don't have the dynamite, a government that wants to take over can have the dynamite. Yeah. In fact, well, in fact, wait a minute. I, I, let me take that all back. I think uh, we're we're not being wholly uh, 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 honest about this. The fact is that uh, we all should be allowed to carry uh, carry uh, atomic devices, nuclear devices. Uh, that's that's a rabbit hole that you may not want to go down. Well, but, I don't want to go down I, it, I, but but hey, where do we where do we say that we we need to protect ourselves from a totalitarian government that might want to take us over? Because obviously they would have missiles, and so if they yeah, have missiles, we should, also. we should also each of us individually have our at least our own rocket launchers. You know, I, I was thinking uh, not not you know because this is a stupid subject at this point. It, it's gone into the gutter. Uh, you were talking to uh, Will Durst, and you were talking about words that the meanings have been cheapened: a star, a friend. Uh, you know, and I, I thought of one while you were talking about that citizen. Uh, that's that's one that's getting cheapened uh, as you know every day as we speak, uh, because the uh, the the right to uh, to citizenship is becoming uh, uh, there's no there's no value to it. Wait a minute, know? Phil, Phil, Phil. You don't remember our history of our country? That in fact, this yeah, the one this, that gave us the Second minute, Amendment. This country, Phil, you're changing the subject. No, no, I'm, you're I'm, you're I'm no, supporting. You're, no, you're talking about immigrants, and 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 the fact is, this is a country made from immigrants that was created right. by immigrants. There isn't a, the only people that aren't immigrants, unfortunately, have been put rounded up and put on reservations. You know, when 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 my Great grandparents came to this country. Mm -hmm. They came in on a boat. They got off at Ellis oh, Island. Jimmy, give they were that, processed yeah, for that, two give or three Give me that days. old story again. You go right ahead. And, and they let them in. It's not oh, the old we, story. We, it's we. the story that. Yeah, our, but the fact is, the wrote. fact is, Phil, that what we're saying is, is that the great majority of people in this country were immigrants, and their families were immigrants. They're all immigrants. And this is a country made of immigrants, and so we should, we, sh if any country should embrace immigration, it should be this country. In today's world, with the problems that this world has with uh, uh, people knocking down buildings and flying planes into buildings, don't you think that we should be able to vet the people that are coming into this country? It's not that we don't welcome immigrants. Uh, it's just that we want, and people want legal immigration, that you're, you're bringing people in. You're that asking are us to do to more. Country. You're asking us to do more for an individual trying to get in from another country than you've asked for from a person who wants to be president of the United States. Because we have a president right now who has never been vetted. Who has never been vetted. He got vetted by the American people. They uh, voted for him. <laughs> and, and he got over 270 electoral college votes and the other guy yeah why woman, can't we see his why can't didn't. we why can't we see his tax returns Plus it's none uh, of your why business. why can't we have his his, his uh, ex uh, uh, um, legal consultant speak to the a congressional committee what you does know, he have to hide what, what what does he have to hide phil the report what does he out. have to hide? You just don't want I, no, you're, you're, you're not denying, answering my question. You're, the truth. you're not answering you're my question, Phil. Phil, it's not a question that I'm a never-Trumper. 
you got Phil, Trump derangement syndrome. Phil, Phil, you are He'll never you, accepting. You are it. not accepting the fact because he has rights. He's he's an American wait a minute, with rights. Wait a minute. You can't no, go on a fishing expedition. No, he expedition doesn't. To no, he doesn't have. Find. He doesn't have the same rights you and I have, Phil. Well, he, does he does not. No, because he's, he's accountable. A of the no, and he's accountable United more States. than we are to the American public. Okay, well, and he's, he he's accountable uh, he, to do he, the job. He owes them uh, a tax return. He owes them uh, an explanation of things. It, no, uh, the only reason he doesn't want these things to happen it is he's got something to hide. Otherwise, he'd for have no problem years, with it. Alex, for two years, you've been waiting for the Mueller report to condemn him. No, the I Mueller haven't. Report I haven't. Out, I, and he I, wasn't condemned. I, now you want way back else. when I was back, way, way back when I move on I, oh, and do the shut up, work. Phil. Way back when, way back when <laughs> uh, I said on this very program, I didn't think the Mueller report would amount to a hell of beans. Okay. And it didn't. And it did. So I said it before. It's you had this, you said it. it was yes. No collusion. Uh, 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 I believe Charlie had something. Uh, Charlie wanted to say. Right. Well, the Mueller report didn't exonerate him. Yeah, it exonerated him on collusion. And once uh, I got a feeling Comey's going to testify, and we'll and we'll see. You know, you guys have interpreted this report and and what the second Phil uh, Phil uh, Phil Phil. Let Let's not get into all of this. We we're, we're just repeating ourselves over and over and over again. Well, she now, got this, wait a minute. Hold on a sec. No, I got better things to do. Like I keep waiting for the uh, signal to stop, but it doesn't stop. <laughs> uh, so you know, we're we're okay. And I gotta go add Ray to the group again because Ray keeps. Uh, uh, fucking up on us here. Let me see here. There we go. Okay. Well, so, the, the report, though, did make it pretty clear that their campaign became aware of Russian interference in their campaign's favor. And as far as the report or the investigation could determine, they made no effort to basically work hand in hand with that, uh, that movement. But they also did absolutely nothing to stop it. They didn't report it, and and they didn't take any kind of steps to alert anyone about it or cut it off at the pass, if you will. And I understand that might not be illegal or whatever, but it does certainly give some determination about the integrity of the individual. I mean, I've likened it to a very similar situation where, you know, I compare everything to sports where, you know, a golfer hits a shot, a blind approach shot to a green, and he can't see where it lands, and he and it and it goes over the green and kind of into the crowd, and a guy in the crowd who's a big fan of the guy kicks it onto the green right up next to the pin, and the golfer shows up and says, "Wow, I hit this great shot," but he didn't. And then somebody walks over and whispers in his ear, "No, you actually didn't. Some guy kicked it up there for you," and he he doesn't he doesn't do anything about it. And I think anybody that would love the game. And, and it was a good person would say, well, well, that's not right. That violated the spirit of the game, the spirit of competition. That's not fair. I didn't get what I earned, which is what all Americans are supposed to be about. You know, I, I didn't get what I earned of my own sweat, of my own work. And, and I think that was the real telling thing that, you know, they, they, did, they did nothing to, you know, dissuade that movement from, Anything. If anything, the investigation showed through a lot of emails and things like that that they were they were genuinely pretty happy to find it out. As a matter of fact, uh, again, not illegal, but certainly uh, uh, not moral, not ethical, not in any way. Now, uh, you uh, are you aware that they were saying that not only did Obama know, uh, but that uh, the FBI knew that they um, that uh, there were issues with uh, Russians at trying to uh, influence uh, the Trump campaign. Sure. And the FBI uh, and the Obama White House made no effort to alert the Trump yeah. campaign and, that this and, was and, happening. And I would just ask yourself to understand, I mean, in a lot of ways, what could Obama do? I mean, the rock <laughs> and the hard place that President Obama was placed in between is, is, is incredible because on one hand, if he does nothing, which and did. we get the result that we get. You can sit here today and you can say that. And on the other hand, if he takes any sort of step whatsoever to 
stop that movement and it hurts the Trump campaign or even gives the appearance that it hurt the Trump campaign, you'd still be sitting here complaining about he took steps that hurt the Trump campaign and Hillary won and that's why Hillary won. And the I mean, he was, he was basically, I mean, I can't imagine a worse spot than that. And it, the Comey letter... Very good the point, Senate, by the way. The, the, the Comey letter to the Senate about Hillary didn't just do that that damage to the uh, to the Clinton campaign. Yeah, it, uh, it did to the Clinton campaign, which which is exactly the kind of thing that would have happened if 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 President Obama had taken any kind of steps that you suggested, and and the news of that would have came out, and and I think we can we can guarantee ourselves it would have come out. Obama, because, you know, not everyone in the federal government was an Obama lover. I mean. Look, uh, Obama uh, made uh, his his White House made uh, knowledge available to Diane Feinstein that her driver for 20 years was a Chinese operative, and uh, so uh, you know this is what they do. They tell the uh, presidential, you know, you're running for president, you're you're the nominee. They tell them mm -hmm. when these things are happening. But there was an a, an effort to thwart. Uh, Trump and they didn't tell him and they were looking to catch him on something. Charlie, just in case Charlie's he got his fingers up. Charlie. Well, yes. he could put up his toes, but it wouldn't be enough. <laughs> You're muted, Charlie. Charlie. Charlie's muted. Come on. Go. Okay. Obama did go to Mitch McConnell about coming out with a bipartisan message about this Russian interference in the election, and McConnell refused to help. In fact, he said that if Obama said anything about it, he was yeah. going to claim that Obama was yeah. being partisan. I mean, that that's an absolute reported fact, that that meeting took place, and, 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 and the solid reporting that's been done basically has Mitch McConnell on the record saying, we're going to do nothing to stop this. There's nothing illegal about it. And if you take any steps to stop this, I'm going to go right out there on the steps of the Capitol building, and I'm going to tell everyone that you did it. And that's what I'm saying. That's the position that he was in. The only person that had any power in this situation was Donald J. Trump, and we saw the decision that he made. The decision that he made was to say, you know what? The guy kicked the ball right down to the pen. Good for me. I'm going to tap in for this, you know, little two-inch birdie, and I'm going to go on and, you know, keep playing the game. And that that bothers people who compete and who try to live a life, you know, of integrity and who are trying to live what all Americans are always harping and harping and harping about, which is, you know what, in this life you get what you work for. And I think we all know that's a bunch of horse shit, and we know it because it rolled right down from the top, from our leaders right on down. That's, that's a, you know, that's a big ton of shit. Patrick, now, we I, I Patrick, understand. Patrick, we haven't heard anything from you in a while. Any comments about what we're talking about? No, not particularly. I mean, um, you know, the, the, this whole topic isn't really my wheelhouse anyway. I it doesn't get me cranked up one way or the other. So why they're taking both of us away? Wait a minute. Why? Uh, it, it's the same as most other shit. He, he's president right now, and there's what the fuck are you going to do about it? I mean, it, it, we're not going to throw him out as much as anybody wants to. It, there's two years left. That's not going to happen. Right. Um, the Mueller report, to me, revealed exactly nothing. Um, redacted or unredacted, I don't think it's going to make a difference. Um, I... The taxes, uh, again, I've asked this many times. I get yelled at from all of you all the time. What the fuck the difference? I mean, even if they release you know, it. I'll, I'll tell you, you want, you want to know what the difference is, Patrick? Uh, today, I, I was asked by, I think it was B&H here in New York, do I want to have a B&H credit card in which they will uh, give me a break and not charge me tax, but they will pay the tax, so... I, I, they would get stuff cheaper. I got an and, email about that, too. Yeah, and I thought about it, and I went and I looked at the thing to, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 fill it out. Card. And it asked me how much money I make every year. And I kind of figure that's nobody's business. But the oh, fact but is, I rent, I rent an apartment here. I had to give them, what, two, three years yeah. of... of, of uh, 
of income tax returns? Uh, yep. and, and we're simply asking Obama for one because he's president. It's a very competitive market uh, to rent apartments in New York. And they're trying to rent it, to the strongest but it's bullshit. candidate. It's bullshit because the fact is I have to – I have to give them my, my income tax returns. I don't say, well, you're not going to get them, but give me the apartment anyway. They'll just tell me to well, go you fuck could. myself. You, you just wouldn't get it. I but just wouldn't Trump get it. Trump didn't have to pay that. Trump didn't all, have to pay that All I know price. is that it's, been con it's always been considered that the president of the United States shows us his tax returns. They, it's you not know, law. In fact, some of them have gone back 10 years to show yep. them. Yes, uh, Patrick. Yeah, my, but my point is... It hasn't happened, and now if they were released over two years into his presidency, mm -hmm. what difference is it going to make? Even if it showed that he'd been in hawk and in the red for the last 10 years, he's president. What is that going to do? Disqualify him from being president? Somebody uh, at the uh, to the New York Times released uh, some tax information on Trump back in the in the 80s and the early 90s when he was having his tumultuous uh, time with uh, Eastern Airlines when he tumultuous the shuttle yeah. tumultuous uh, and uh, he he brought he he bought the Eastern shuttle and he was losing like seven million dollars a month uh, and uh, uh, the hotel thing was going upside down and and um, you know, so he lost a lot of money. He lost over a billion dollars uh, in those years, and that's what those uh, tax returns would show. Well, and and here's my they're thirty years old. And should he have released them in the beginning, like everybody typically does? Yes, I yeah. I think he should have. But since he didn't, I still worrying about it this late in the game. I. I that's what, I don't get excited over it. I, I think he should have, but at this point, it does, like Hillary famously said, what difference does it make now? Well, he says they're under audit. And uh, every, if they're under every, audit, uh, no, they're, if they're the, the IRS looks at his tax returns, it, it, and if they weren't legitimate, the IRS would say Well, something. that's bullshit, that he can't show them because they're, he's under audit. He's always under that's audit. his attorney says. He's, well, well, that's right. No, his attorneys are saying it's it because no he wants them to say it. Show your taxes. He right. doesn't, it's not a rule. He just said that his attorneys advised him not to show them because he's under audit. So they're they're you know they're not done yet. Yeah, you and you think that uh, you, you think that uh, that uh, Donald Trump didn't tell them to say that because they're working for him. Doesn't matter. His attorney advised them. He says, "Hey, Mike, uh, uh, you know," uh, and I don't think it was uh, uh, Cone, yeah, Cohn. Hey, Michael, you know, before you go <laughs> off to the big house, you think I should release my returns? Yeah. Uh, Ray, any last thoughts about this? It's getting dessert right now. I Ray? Jello. Uh, my mic's not working. Yes, it is. Yeah, it oh, is. Oh, okay, good. I wasn't sure. What do I think about this? I think that, uh, first of all, Trump is just is, is dodging it by saying that he's being audited. That's, that's a red herring. That's, that has nothing to do with anything. He's obviously trying to hide something, and uh, he's going to get away with it, like he gets away with everything else. Well, I think and, what I think what he, I, people I, are going to apologize for yeah. him and be laissez there there, well, and say, "Oh, there's two years left. We can't do anything. Just let it run out." You know, I, 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 it's not going to be positive. I, 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 I think. I think. What? Should he be in the White House? Yeah. Well, I, what what I think what I think is the reason is that he doesn't want people to see how little he has. Okay, because he loves having that reputation of being a billionaire, and I think there's something to prove to show there that he really isn't. You know. Forbes came out with a report on his his properties, what the mortgages were, and what his uh, what his net value is that he that he holds, and it was somewhere around three and a half to four billion, uh, just at the point that he was elected. But that's so, not the only amount of your worth. How much do you owe? Uh, well, that's uh, no, was, not on those properties. Mortgages. How much do you owe in other areas? Mar-a-Lago is free and clear. Uh, uh, we're not, I, I don't care that Mar-a-Lago is free and clear, Phil. But, well, we're running out of time here. But what, yeah. I, what I'm trying to say to you is there are a lot of other things he does financially, and there are other aspects of his finances that, uh, quite frankly, 
Uh, they're they're not they're not paying for sex. Yeah, well, that that that, <laughs> that costs a lot. One hundred and thirty thousand a bang. Anyway, hey, listen, that's it. Uh, that's about all she wrote for tonight. I'd like to say goodbye to uh, Phil and to Ray and to Charlie and to Tony and to uh, uh, Josh and of course to the wonderful and attractive Patrick Blazik. And if you'll all give a big wave goodbye, I'll give you a big wave goodbye back okay and hey we made it to the end of the show without the show actually collapsing on us uh, because i've been having a machine here that just collapses but i did stop using a program and i think maybe that might be what caused it or didn't cause it well we'll find out you know i'll be sitting here after the show and it will go down but it's fine i never argue about things that go down on me that's a joke folks anyway uh, uh, thank you, and uh, thanks to the panel, by the way. I, it was a good discussion tonight all the way around. I'm Alex Bennett. Up next is uh, uh, a guy I call Irv, but he calls himself uh, Jack Bishop. And he does a show called The Intersection. Hey, give it a call. Talk to him. It's a lot of fun. And then tomorrow night, uh, the sports show is on at uh, 8.30 Eastern Daylight Time with the franchise MC and, of course, Damian Chaplin with The Exchange comes in here at 9.30. I'll be back again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, you see her. Tell her I love her, okay? <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>